All right, welcome to introduction to C programming. Uh, today's topic is on repetition statements, specifically on for loops. Since we have already covered while loops and do while loops in previous lectures, this is going to be a shorter lecture with, because for loops work uh, very similarly to how while loops and do while loops work, it's just a little bit different syntax. So uh, with a for loop, uh, we have all of the details of the counter control repetition embedded in the statement uh, at the top of the loop, the for statement. The initialization, the condition, and the increment are all included in one statement. So take a look at this uh, code snippet that I have below. I uh, say have the value of count, so I have this variable count declared as an integer. In my for loop, I open the parenthesis, so for is a reserved word in C. In Visual Studio, it will turn blue when you type it. You open the parenthesis, and there are three parameters here. The first one is the initialization. I set count's initial value to zero, and then I follow it by a semicolon. The second parameter is the condition. How, uh, when do we want this loop to uh, continue? Or when do we want to stop looping? That's our condition. So in this case, I said count less than 10. So as long as count is less than 10, I'm going to continue looping. The third is the uh, increment. The third parameter is the increment. In this case, I say count plus plus. If you remember from our previous lecture, count plus plus uh, is the same as saying count equals count plus one. So it's just going to increment the value of count and reassign it into the count variable. Inside of the loop, all I'm doing is printing out the value of count. So looking at this loop, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to start off by uh, initializing the value of count to be zero. The initialization only occurs once. It occurs at the beginning of the loop. Second we check the condition. If the condition is false from the get-go, we will not execute the body of the loop at all. This has a similar behavior to a while loop uh, and slightly different behavior than what we have with a do while loop. Since the do while loop, we are going to execute the body of the loop at least once before we check the condition. So we initialize the value count to be zero. We then check the condition is zero less than 10. It is. We get inside the loop. We print out the value of count. In this case, we're going to print out eight zero. And then we come back up to our for loop and we are going to do a count plus plus. We increment the value count to be a one. And then we check to see if one is less than ten. It is. We come back in and we print out a one. We come back up. We increment the value count to be two. We check to see if two is less than ten. It is. So we print out a two. We come back up and increment count to be three. We check to see if three is less than 10. It is, so we print out a three. We continue on. I'm gonna jump forward in the loop a little bit. So let's say that we have just printed out an eight. We then increment eight to be a nine. We check to see if nine is less than 10. It is, so we print nine. We then uh, increment nine to be a 10. We check to see if 10 is less than 10. It is not. So we break out of our for loop and we execute the very next line of code. So in this case, we're going to print out the values from 0 through 9 inclusively. We are not going to print out the value 10. However, at the very next line of code following the for loop, the value of count will be 10. So if you were to have a print line after the for loop outside of the body to print out the value of count, uh, it would be a 10. Note that with the increment, it does not matter whether you're using a pre-increment or a post-increment because this is considered a line all of its own. So it's going to execute the same way whether you use the pre-increment or a post-increment. However, if within the condition statement you said count plus plus less than 10, now you have to acknowledge that there, may, there is going to be a different behavior between using the pre-increment and the post-increment. A good rule of thumb. Don't use the pre or post increment inside the condition. Instead, put it in uh, this increment statement here at the end uh, so that you don't have to worry about whether the pre or the post increment is going to have a different behavior upon the execution of that section of code. Okay, here is the flow of execution of a for loop. First, the initialization gets executed, then the condition gets checked. If the condition is true, we execute the body. If it's false, we break out of the loop. Uh, if the condition is true, we execute the body and then we increment. Uh, and then we're going to loop back up to step two again. We will never go back to step one, so we will never execute the initialization again after uh, the first time. The very first time we get to the loop is the only time the initialization will be executed. After that, we will never go back and execute the initialization again. We check the condition after we increment. Um, so 
the, we initialize the variable, we check the condition. If it's true, we execute the body, we come back up, and we uh, increment, then we check the condition again. If it's true, we execute the body again, we come back up, we execute the increment, we check the condition. We continue this process until the condition becomes false. At that point, we break out of our loop and we execute the very next line of code uh, immediately following our loop. Uh, we are able to nest loops, which means a loop within a loop. So you see here, uh, I have a for loop uh, on the variable i. Assume that both i and j are integers. So I have a for loop uh, iterating over i, i starting at 0, i going up to uh, strictly less than 10, so it's going to go up to 9. And then the inner for loop, we have j at 0 and j going up strictly less than 10 also, so j will also go up to 9. And uh, looking at what I'm printing out here, i times 10 plus j. Uh, if you think about that and see exactly what this is going to print out, I'm going to leave that one up to you to figure out. You can type this code in and figure out what it's going to print. Um, kind of a neat little code. There's a, probably an easier way to print out these values, but uh, a neat way of doing it with nested for loops where we're only iterating up to 10 on each of our loops. Okay, we'll have a program in just a second. I'll talk with you all then.